Hello friends and welcome to another organic chemistry video lecture. Today we are looking at topic R3.2 electron transfer reactions, also known as redox reactions, but in organic molecules. Our guiding question, what happens when electrons are transferred? These are our understandings. Again, this is redox specific to organic molecules. If you want the general redox video, I will link it in the comments. And our objectives, we're going to review reduction and oxidation. We're also going to remind ourselves what are primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. We're going to talk about the oxidation of those different kinds of alcohols. And then we're going to flip it and go backwards, talk about the reduction of carbonyl groups back to hydroxyl groups, and also about how we go from carboxyl groups back to carbonyl groups. And then we're going to wrap up with a look at the reduction of alkenes and alkynes. We're going to make them go from unsaturated to more saturated. And as promised, first we're going to review what even is redox, reduction, and oxidation reactions. Reduction is all about the gaining of electrons or protons, whereas oxidation is the loss of electrons or protons. I like Leo says Ger as my mnemonic device, but you can also use oil rig oxidation is losing and reduction is gaining electrons and protons so here we have an electron donor here's that electron it is being donated to the electron acceptor notice that here the electron acceptor has gained that electron because it gained an electron it was reduced the thing that lost its electron it was oxidized we're going to look at the oxidation of alcohols, but interestingly, different kinds of alcohols get oxidized in different ways. So first we're going to remind ourselves, what does it even mean to be a primary alcohol, a secondary alcohol, and a tertiary alcohol? When we are deciding which kind of alcohol we have, we're gonna find our hydroxyl group. We're going to look at the carbon that is stuck to that hydroxyl group. If there is only one carbon bound to the carbon that is bound to the hydroxyl group, it's a primary alcohol. Here is my hydroxyl group. This carbon is bound to one, two carbons. This is a secondary alcohol. This hydroxyl group is bound to this carbon. This carbon is bound to, oh my goodness, one, two, three carbons. That makes it a tertiary alcohol. And again, our primary alcohols are those where we have a hydroxyl group bound to a carbon that is bound to only one other carbon. When we oxidize our primary alcohols, we're going to use an oxidizing agent. We can abbreviate that with an O in these square parentheses. Good examples of oxidizing agents for alcohols are acidified potassium dichromate and acidified potassium permanganate. When we oxidize this primary alcohol, what happens is we lose this hydrogen and also that hydrogen, and then we have a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. That molecule looks like one, two, three carbons. In this instance, we have that double bonded oxygen at the terminal carbon at the end of the molecule. That makes this molecule an aldehyde. So we can oxidize a primary alcohol. In this case, we had propan-1-al, and now we have propan-al aldehyde with the carbonyl group at the end of the molecule. What's kind of fun, though, about this aldehyde is that this carbon still has a hydrogen that could be stolen. We could further oxidize this aldehyde into another product. So if I want to keep the aldehyde, I'm going to have to distill my product. We're going to have to distill out the aldehyde. What does that mean? Remember that in distillation, what happens is we have our, our mixture here. The heat is going to cause, in this instance, the aldehyde to evaporate. We're going to have vapor of aldehyde in our condensing tube. Cold water is going to cause that vapor to go back to a liquid, and we're going to have our aldehyde drip into this collecting flask. If I want to keep my aldehyde, I need just a little bit of oxidizing agent, and we need to distill out that product. If, however, I want to continue the oxidation of this primary alcohol, we're going to have excess oxidizing agent, more stuff to oxidize the aldehyde now. We're going to end up with, are you so excited to know, a carboxylic acid. 
So we're going to steal this hydrogen and replace it with a hydroxyl group. What's that going to look like? We're going to end up with double O O H. And then of course, all of our other hydrogens. This In this example, we have propanoic acid. So we go from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, propan 1-al to propan al to propanoic acid. In order to get my aldehyde to oxidize to the carboxylic acid, we're not going to distill. Instead, we're going to carry out reflux. Reflux means heat and mix and mix and heat some more. We do this super similar to distillation. We still have our reaction mixture here. I still have a condensing tube here, but instead of taking my aldehyde out into a separate flask, what happens is my aldehyde is going to evaporate, and then we're going to cool it, and it's going to drip right back down into the reaction mixture. It's going to evaporate, and we're going to cool it, and it's going to again, drip right back down into that reaction mixture. So this is reflux. This is how we get carboxylic acids as opposed to distillation, which is how I keep my aldehyde. Let's look at the oxidation states of the carbons in these molecules just to confirm that oxidation did occur. So here in my propan 1-all, we had C3H8O. That oxygen has a negative two oxidation state. Each of the hydrogens is a positive one. So eight altogether makes a positive eight, which means that my three carbons had to add up to a negative six. Negative six divided by three is negative two. In my aldehyde, this propanal, we had C3H6O. That oxygen still has a negative two. I now have a positive six for my six hydrogens. And so my three carbons have to add up to a negative four. So each carbon has a negative four thirds oxidation state. Notice that we're closer to zero. That oxidation state did get higher. It's less negative oxidation occurred. Let's confirm with our propanoic acid. Here we have C3 H6. Now we have O2. Those two oxygens add up to a negative four. My three hydrogens, oh sorry, six. My six hydrogens still add up to a positive six, which means that my three carbons need to add up to a negative two. Negative two divided by three is negative two thirds. So we went from negative two up to negative four thirds up some more to negative two-thirds, we're getting closer and closer to zero, which means that oxidation is definitely occurring. Let's oxidize another primary alcohol. Here I have my hydroxyl group bound to a carbon that's bound to only one other carbon. This time I have one, two, three, four, five. This says pentan one all. We have pentan one all. When we first oxidize it, our first product is going to be the aldehyde. We're going to steal hydrogen. We're going to steal hydrogen. We're going to build a double bond, and we are going to get those five carbons, double bonded oxygen, and then, of course, we're going to fill in with all of our other hydrogens, so many hydrogens, and we have pentanal, not pentanol, but pentanal, the aldehyde. If I want to keep that aldehyde, we need just a little bit of oxidizing agent, and we also need to distill out our product. If I want to keep the aldehyde, we need some distillation. If, however, I have excess oxidizing agent, and now we have some reflux, mix and heat and heat and mix some more, we're going to substitute that hydrogen for a hydroxyl group, and we're going to get one, two, three, four, five carbons, double bonded oxygen, and a hydroxyl group. And then, of course, all of our other hydrogens around that molecule. And what do we have now? We have pentanoic acid. So we went from primary alcohol to aldehyde to carboxylic acid. And this 
is what happens when we oxidize primary alcohols. What happens if we oxidize a secondary alcohol? So here I have a secondary alcohol. The hydroxyl group is bound to a carbon that is bound to one, two carbons. This is a secondary alcohol. This is propan two all. What's going to happen is super similar to the first step of oxidation of my primary alcohols. We're going to steal this hydrogen. We're going to steal this hydrogen. We're going to form a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. What's that going to produce? We're going to have our methyl group. We're going to have our carbon. We'll have that other methyl group. And then here in the middle, we now have double bonded oxygen. I still have a carbonyl group, but now it's not at the terminal carbon. It's in the middle of the molecule. That makes it a ketone, not an aldehyde. This is going to be propanone. We made propanone instead of propanal. Can I further oxidize this? Does this carbon have a hydrogen that we can steal? It does not. And so this is the end of the story for secondary alcohols. That's it. That's all we've got. We can make ketones. Much shorter story than the oxidation of our primary alcohols. We don't need to distill. We don't need to reflux. We just get a ketone. That is all. Let's practice oxidizing a couple more secondary alcohols. Here we have one, two, three, four, five. This is pentan two all, pentan two all. When we oxidize it, what's going to happen is we're going to steal this one hydrogen and this one hydrogen, and we're going to make a double bond between the C and the O. What am I going to call this ketone? This ketone is going to be pentan two own. I do have to add the number because I could have put the double bonded oxygen over here and that would have given me a different molecule. So this is pentan two own. What if I oxidize this secondary alcohol? Notice my hydroxyl group is bound to a carbon that's bound to one, two carbons. Again, we're going to steal a hydrogen and steal a hydrogen and make a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. What do I have when I oxidize? This happened to be one, two, three, four, five. This was pentan three all. Well, now I have pentan three own another ketone. Sounds good. Let's oxidize a tertiary alcohol. Remember that tertiary alcohols are those in which we have a hydroxyl group bound to a carbon that's bound to one, two, three other carbons. This is a tertiary alcohol. This one is not, even though it's got a lot of branches. The hydroxyl group is bound to a carbon. This one happens to be bound to only one other carbon. This is actually a primary alcohol because this carbon bound to only one carbon. When I oxidize alcohols, I steal hydrogens. I steal hydrogens. Tell me about the hydrogens on this carbon. Can I steal any hydrogens? I cannot, which means that tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized. There is no oxidation of tertiary alcohols, no reactions going to occur, because again, this carbon doesn't have any hydrogens bound to it that I can steal in that oxidation reaction. All that oxidation was about losing electrons and protons. Here we're going to reduce those organic compounds, give them back their electrons and their protons. When we oxidized our alcohols, we made some carbonyl groups. If I want to reduce a carbonyl group, you know what I'm going to get? a hydroxyl group, we're going to make an alcohol. And so here we have our carbonyl group. We're going to add electrons and hydrogens. You might be looking at this guy, this hydrogen that has a negative one charge and a non-binding pair of electrons, and you're like, whoa, wait a minute, how is hydrogen an anion? Well, we have these super cool reducing agents known as lithium aluminum hydride also known as LAH. And when I have hydrogen bound to metals instead of to non-metals, hydrogen has a negative oxidation state. 
So I can add hydrogen as an anion. It's got some electrons and that proton. And we can go ahead and give that back to the carbons, which is going to reduce them. They're gaining electrons and protons. And we go from a carbonyl back to the hydroxyl. We go from aldehyde back to an alcohol. And just like when we oxidized our aldehydes to make our carboxylic acids, we can reduce our carboxylic acids and turn them back into aldehydes. We can again use that LAH, that lithium aluminum hydride, as our reducing agent. It's really just the backwards of the oxidation that we've been looking at already. And our last example of a reduction reaction in organic chemistry should look awfully familiar because we also call it electrophilic addition. If I have a molecule like this alkene ethene and I add to it some hydrogen gas, what's going to happen is hydrolytic fission. And then we're going to have some bonding and we're going to have some more bonding. And we're going to end up with no more double bonds but instead single bonds, and we're adding those hydrogens to the molecule. We're going from unsaturated to more saturated. When we add in those hydrogens, we also reduce our carbons. Let's look at the oxidation state of carbon here in ethene. We had C2H4. Each one of those hydrogens has a plus one. There are four of them. That's a total of positive four, which means that my carbons have to add up to a negative four. Each one of them, therefore, needs to have an oxidation state of negative two. Over here in my ethane, I've got C2H6. Each one of my hydrogens is a positive one. That's a total of positive six which means that my carbons have to add up to negative six. Two of them add up to negative six, means that each one is negative three. We went from a negative two down to a negative three. That is reduction. We went from unsaturated to less unsaturated, more saturated, and the oxidation state of carbon was reduced. It went down. Let's do the same thing here. If I add lots of hydrogen, we can break up this triple bond into a double bond and then a single bond. And we once again are going to end up with ethane. And again, the carbon and ethane had an oxidation state of negative three. How about in ethane? We have C2H2. Each one of those hydrogens has a charge of positive one, total of positive two, which means that my carbons have to add up to a negative two, which means that each one of them is only negative one. We went from negative one down to negative three. That's big reduction. And that is the close of our last video lecture on organic chemistry. We talked about what happens when electrons are transferred between organic molecules. We reviewed oxidation and reduction. We talked about primary, secondary, tertiary alcohols. We talked about the oxidation of alcohols. Primary alcohols can go to aldehydes and then carboxylic acids. Secondary alcohols go to ketones. Tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized. We talked about the reduction of carbonyl groups back to hydrogen hydroxyl groups, and we talked about carboxyl groups being reduced to carbonyl groups. And then we also talked about the reduction of alkenes and alkynes, taking them from unsaturated to more saturated. Great work today.